Amanda, I want to thank you for letting me stay here. I know I'm a bit much sometimes and that it's been tough after Bob and all. <laughs> and um, you've just been so wonderful. I mean, I make a mess and, well, I clean up afterwards, but it's not really your style. Sometimes I think you make me sane. Me? <laughs> the day I make someone sane, they're in trouble. <laughs> Anyway, um, I made you something as a thank you gift. Open it. I went through your pictures and picked my favorite ones. And it took me forever because there's so many good ones. <laughs> this. That's for all the wonderful photos you will be taking. Had a strange day. Thank you. existing simultaneously. There literally are different worlds in which we live. The macroscopic world that we see is the world of ourselves. It's the world of our atoms. It's the world of our nuclei. These are two totally different worlds. They have their own language. They have their own mathematics. They're not just small. Each is totally different. But they're complementary. Because I am my atom. But I am also myself. I'm also my macroscopic physiology. It's all true. They're just different levels of truth. The deepest level of truth uncovered by science and by philosophy is the fundamental truth of unity. At that deepest subnuclear level of our reality, you and I are literally one. 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 up in the morning and I consciously create my day the way I want it to happen. Now sometimes because my mind is examining all the things that I need to get done, it takes me a little bit to settle down and get to the point of where I'm actually intentionally creating my day. But here's the thing, when I create my day and out of nowhere little things happen that are so unexplainable I know that they are the process or the result of my creation. And the more I do that, the more I build a neural net in my brain that I accept that that's possible. It gives me the power and the incentive to do it the next day. In addiction, you have a supreme, beautiful opportunity to decipher the difference between uh, intangibility of our nobleness of character 
and the day-to-day -day business of how that character is revealed in a three-dimensional world through our bodies. What we will learn is that addiction is the feeling of a chemical rush that is cascaded through the bodies through a whole assortment of glands and ductless glands and through the spinal fluid, a feeling that some would call a sexual fantasy that only takes one sexual fantasy for a man to have a heart on. In other words, it only takes one thought here for a man to have an erection in his member. And yet, there was nothing outside of him that gave him that. It was what was within him that gave him that. Oh, oh, <laughs> hey, man, I, I didn't know you were there. Guilty. A wedding. Come on, blink. This is a good assignment, if you'd see it that way. What to see? I do. They did. Oh, God, Amanda. I mean, you, you live in your past, and everything with you is about what happened. You hate churches. You hate weddings. You hate guys. And I want you to go scope it out. Don't me too. I got a man there. I know. I took the pictures, remember? You got too many memories clouding your vision. Oh, Amanda, 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 you know you're the best textbook photographer I have. And I want to have some great pictures. You, you know what? You need a good Polish wedding. And watch out for those good Catholic boys, huh? You need to preach. <laughs> Come on, get out of here. Bye. When I was younger, um, I had lots of ideas about what God was. And now I realize I'm not conscious enough to truly understand what that concept means. That I am at one with the great being that made me and brought me here and that formed the galaxies and the universes, etc. How did that get taken out of religion? It was not hard. of the problems that religion and various philosophical movements down through the centuries have produced have been errors because that's where they started. That God is a distinct separate being from us to whom I must offer worship, whom I must cultivate, humor, please and hope to attain a reward from at the very end of my life. That is not what God is, that is a blasphemy. God is such a broad thing, um, some parts of which, most of the parts of which that, that are associated with organized religion is something that I sort of recoil at and something that I think has done a lot of harm to the world, done harm to women, done harm to oppressed peoples, done harm to the World Trade Center. And yet, at the same point, we have the epitome of a great science, the closest science has ever come to explaining Jesus' interpretation that the mustard seed was larger than the kingdom of heaven. And the only science that can fit into that analogy is quantum physics.